I didn't get to read the article that he's going to be banned for the Oscars for 10 years. Um, that's fine with me, I guess. <laughs> I know. You saw that, right, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, he resigned anyway. And I don't see yeah. him winning another best, best actor Oscar anyway. So I think we're going to be all right. I know. Yeah, all his uh his endorsements and jobs dried up, right? Nobody wants to work with him anymore. Netflix or Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking no one's gonna want to work uh with him anymore. So so I'm in I'm in Massachusetts, Joe's in Connecticut, so it's starting to get nice around here, Joe. The weather is beautiful today. <sighs> much, much nicer, yeah. It's looking yeah. like spring almost. Yeah. What's it like in California, Jedi? It is very hot. <laughs> So I want to go to the pool. Yeah. Um, all right. So Jedi, when do you want to record the next show? Oh, whenever you want to. I'm, I'm right. open. All right. How about now? Hey, Morks, thanks for joining us at Crimes, Conspiracies, and Beyond. You ever think it's good to face your fears, like me getting shots in blood drawn, which I hate, or Joe being afraid to wear a turtleneck because he's claustrophobic, oh, or, Je or Jedi not being prepared for a show and me throwing a random show uh, at her? That's oh, hilarious. my gosh. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so today's show is going to be a little bit different. We're doing a game show. And Joe, do you know the show What's My Line? It's a little bit before our time. I do. So Jedi, basically what we're going to do, we see how we have Kathleen here. We have a couple different guests, and we're going to have you guys see if you can guess what they're here for. And okay. Joe, you want to play a little clip of What's My Line so you guys know how to play this game? So this gentleman tonight, grows garlic, and they're going to try to guess tonight. that. We can tell you that Mr. Botley is self-employed and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Botley, is it a useful product? Yes. Is it a product that I might possibly own? Yes. Might a man own it too? Ma'am? Yes. <laughs> if either one of us had this product, might we keep it in the house? Yes. All right. I get it. So Jedi, you get the game? <laughs> yes. So you're going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> a less than enthusiastic Jedi understands. Yeah. So, um, so how are you doing, Kathleen? Thanks for joining us. So you live in Florida? I'm living in Port Charlotte, Florida. Yes, right now. Cool. So we're going to have you guys go back and forth. We'll start with Jedi. Jedi, you're going to ask Kathleen yes or no questions. Once you get a no, you're done, and it's Joe's turn. We'll keep going back and forth and see if you can get it. Now, Kathleen is here for, um, I would say she was uh, part of a very rare event. So hmm. something very rare. So, Joe, you want to start off with some questions? Was it something historical? No. Jedi, your turn. Was was it something that involved drugs? No. Is it something that happened that was on the news? Mm, it's, a, it's a great no, question. No, I don't think so. Okay. Was it something that um, your parents were involved in? No. Does it have something to do with your profession? Nope. 
All right. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in a little clue here. Not too much of a clue, but this is a very tragic event, and I'm actually this is pretty cool. You're coming and talking to us about it because I'm sure you struggled with this. So it was some, it was kind of uh, something not good that happened. It would involve it would involve you getting hurt. Was this an accident? Yes. Jedi, you can keep going. Um, did this involve blood? No. So nobody was murdered. Uh, no. it, well, yeah. No. Okay. In, in a in kind of in a roundabout way, Kathleen, right? Not really. Okay. Um. So, which, Kathleen, was this outside? Yes. Okay. And you guys have any more guesses here? Was this at an amusement park? No. So, Kathleen, this was about 50 years ago, right? This was coming up on the anniversary of 50 years. Were you beamed into outer space by a spaceship? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a solid guess, though. <laughs> <laughs> 50 years ago what was 50 years ago it has nothing to do with this could happen tomorrow it could happen anytime were you hit by lightning who said that joe. i did yeah mm -hmm. so joe guys you want to tell us about that and uh, Joe. Oh no way! Really, <laughs> Joe. Joe, wow. do you want to bring? Do you want to bring up the picture of Kathleen and Kevin? Yeah. So, where was this picture taken? Was this at a wedding? You said. That was at my best friend's wedding. We were in his we her wedding. Um, that was about a year prior to the incident, the accident. So, did you? And come note the uh, yeah. beer bottle because that's an important. Um, aspect of this what happened not that particular beer bottle but a beer a beer can oh that's what See, it's struck? Kevin well no Kevin was holding a beer can in his hand mm -hmm. and I wasn't and he he was killed instantly oh my god I was unconscious I was unconscious for, I think it was at least a half hour. Wow. I'm in so the camping sorry. area. Well, like I said, it's 50 years ago. And, you know, the trauma, I mean, it's a trauma, but I've done a lot of work. I'm actually a licensed mental health counselor now. And um, I've done a lot of work in this area and uh, of PTSD. And he, you know... Uh, he was holding the beer can. Wow. No, we're, we were in yeah. a camping area near Sebago oh. Lake in Maine. We had just uh, returned from a, a week's vacation on his uh, motorcycle up to um, Canada. Yeah. So Definitely. This, yeah. Spent... Go ahead. The, the saddest thing that you told me was he was your soulmate, you said. Oh. Aww. Yes, I know. he was. I'm so sorry. And I'm, I'm I'm in the process of writing a book about the whole uh, incident, the accident. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now that it's coming up on that time of 50 years so that, you know, he won't be forgotten because yeah. not many people really talk about it. It's kind of a taboo subject, so to right. speak. And that, um, yeah. None of our parents are alive, so so I can kind of be honest with you know. Yeah. That, I mean, it was in the seventies. You mm -hmm. know, we were kind of free spirits, and you know. 
Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember any of it? Do you remember any of it, or did you just kind of? Like, oh, I, I remember you... everything. Every single really? thing. Mm -hmm. What does it feel? What does it feel like getting struck by lightning? Well, the closest analogy I can bring up is being hit by a Mack truck going about yeah. probably seventy miles an hour. Oh right. wow! Yeah, it's not. I mean, my, everything on my whole body hurt. My heart was beating out of rhythm. Um, I had what was at that time a flash burn in my eyes due to the um, the the strike. It was just so bright. So you and, were you, know. you were still conscious then. You were still conscious. After a half an hour, I woke up and I was conscious after that, but. You know, went had to go to the hospital from the camping area. Were you with I other people? Sorts. Yeah. Were you with? Well, were we were you we with... were in the camping area. You know, it was in August in Maine, and the camping area was actually full, and it was right near a, a small lake. So um, we had been in the lake prior to that incident and heard the storm coming and said, "Well, let's get out of the water." Yeah. I, I've been on golf courses a few times when the lightning strikes and they blow the horn and it, it is kind of scary. It's one of the worst places you can be with your with your irons and stuff on a golf course. Mm -hmm. So what are you supposed to do? You just gotta get gotta get the hell off the course. I mean, it, it's very dangerous on a golf course. I mean, anywhere in an open area. Don't just, go under a tree either. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, do you guys have any more questions for Kathleen before we move on to the next person? I mean, I I've been to Sebago Lake, uh, in Maine, and mm -hmm. yeah, I Kathleen, I feel terrible. I don't even know why I guessed that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the next one's gonna be a little bit more upbeat. So thanks for Kathleen. I'll keep in touch with you. Thanks for coming on. All right. All right. See you later. Thank you, Kathleen. Bye. 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 All right, so we're going to move on to the next guy. I'm just going to go by his initials, A.S., in case um, someone might know him. Hey, how's it going? I'm all right. Thank you. Nice. Thanks. For, so, so what is it, 1 a.m. there? Yes. Okay, so uh, we're going to say, Joe, this is an, someone who, who did a rare feat, definitely an uh, answer to a trivia question, probably. You want to start, Joe? Did this happen in Europe? Yes. Did it happen in your home country? No. Damn it. Je Jedi? Did this feat involve a ball? Ball? No. A ball. Ball? No. Ball? No. no. Did you kill somebody? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jedi, what do you got for him? Did you walk a tightrope between two buildings? No. <laughs> <laughs> was it on Instagram? No, Instagram by, was but, it wasn't around. I don't think. All right. By the time, no. Yeah. Okay. Does th does this involve food? No. Was it on the news? Local news, yes. In Germany? No. <laughs> I um does this involve animals? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys one more guess each. Then I'm gonna throw it a, something to make it a. You were the first one to do it. Mm, yes. Do you have special training for it? Yes. Is it military training? No. Okay. Are you in the circus? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why do you want him to be a circus performer? <laughs> I, I, I would say you're on the right track. You want to find out what 
the profession is, then go from there. Once right. you get that. Do you do performing? Are you a performer? I guess so. Yes. Yeah. Do you juggle? No. <laughs> All right. Circus right, performer Jedi. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one thing out there right now. It, uh, is this a sport? Sport. No, no. I'm I'm, a, I'm asking you, Art. Ah, uh, yes. A, yeah. Yes. Okay. So that I just want to give you guys a little little hint there. To get you off the circus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think or some kind of a goal. I guess so. Yes. Uh that that might be misleading. I, I don't know. I don't know either. No, no, no. Did you catch something? No. I would try to work on the sport first, and then go from there. Maybe try to maybe try that, and narrow down what he does. Well, does we know this, there's no and, ball, Jedi. You established <laughs> no ball, right? So it's something without a ball. Yes. Does this involve running? Mm, no. Are you a pole vaulter? No. Have you ever pole vaulted? No. <laughs> you guys are thinking a little bit too hard. Oh. What sport, you... uh, what sport doesn't involve a ball? And this is an individual sport, right? Yes. What sport doesn't involve a ball? Fighting? Are you a fighter? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> are you a, are, are you a, like a champion fighter? Have you won championships of some sort? Yes. Do you, do you fight MMA? Yes. Ah, and you were the <laughs> first to knock somebody out. Um, I, I would say on the right track, I, I guess. God, oh my Jedi. God. Who oh my is God. this guy? He knocked know, somebody I out. Know. I. Oh my God. Uh, you you have something I haven't heard. No, 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 no. He's just he's oh. just thinking. You've done all the hard work, Joe. Just say the answer. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's a champion of MMA. He's the European champion of the world. Okay, so Jedi, do you want to take one more stab before I just have Joe pull the clip up? You are are you the MMA champion? Who upset some uh, uh, a champion? <laughs> yeah, yes. Underdog. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you beat Kamara Usman? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jedi, who do you think he beat? He's one of the only people in the world to put this guy into submission. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Oh. You want to pull up the Art 1 clip, Joe? From 2008? That's Conor McGregor on the top. Did you give Conor McGregor his first loss? Yes. Oh, ah, yes. Yeah. No so, wonder he went by his initials only. Yeah, well, I, I told him yeah. that. Wh wh how do you how do you pronounce your name? Artem Shitankov. Now, Joe, what am I watching there? Because I'm not an MMA guy. It looked like he was on top of you, then all of a sudden he submitted. Was that like some type of leg lock or something? What was that move? Yes, it was a leg lock. Connor's not much of a wrestler. He really he he really just throws a big left. That's pretty much his only move. Did you find that to be true art? Was there other things that Connor did that you were impressed by? No. At that time he was pretty young. So I just knew that I have to uh, be careful about his punches.
Now, are you shocked how big he is now? How famous he is? Mm. It could happen, and it happened. So I'm glad he he has such a groove in his career. Yeah. Now, what kind of money were you guys paid back then? Five hundred euros. Uh, that's what I read. Oh, that's wow. pretty crazy. I mean, it's unbelievable how much MMA has exploded. The, Joe and Jedi watch watch it like all the time. Yeah. Do you DM Conor McGregor every now and then and tell him I still beat you? <laughs> No. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. I would I'm do not, that all the I'm time. Not, I'm not that type of guy, probably. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool, though. So you're from Lithuania. What is it? It's, it's like 1 a.m. there right now, right? Yes. Yeah. You stay up late. The other night we were talking, I think it was 3 a.m. your time. I would do you be still sleeping. fight? No. I would be sleeping by now, but you asked me to stay, so I stayed. Uh, I don't fight right now. I'm 38, and in lightweight category, it's pretty. I'm pretty old already, so I can fight, but I will never be as good as I was. So, no purpose did, of fighting. I did see you came back for a comeback fight in 2020. Yes, uh, it was after my divorce, so I had some to do something to get some adrenaline. Yeah. yeah. Would you like to take this opportunity to call Conor McGregor out to avenge his <laughs> loss? That might be a nice payday, or is all I'm saying. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you understand that business as much as I understand? But Conor McGregor doesn't need to fight me because it will be a quite poor fight. I mean, there will be no money. I'm yeah. not a huge name in that business, so yeah. But you beat him. I think if you call him out, go on the social media. I know you're a good guy. You don't like that stuff, but that's how the that's how these young bucks make their money tonight. It's all about. Bah, 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 bah. I think he's been called out uh, many, many times, and uh, I'm not the best choice for his rematch. Uh, he will be he will be doing better money to fight other guys i'm not i'm not a good choice and i understand that so no point for me to make fool of myself and call him out it is pretty cool though talking to the first guy to make yeah. him submit. now what joe what's harder to do make someone submit or to knock him out i think it, it so it, listen it takes somebody with skill and someone who's got uh, obviously training in martial arts to submit somebody Anybody can land a punch and knock somebody out. It's not that hard. You know, you you just literally just opportunity. You catch someone uh, moving in at you and, and you're going to knock them out. So to me, I, 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 or I don't know how you feel. I, when I watch a fight, I don't want a knockout. I want you guys to go with the full three or the full five. That's how I know who the better fighter is. Again, somebody can slip a, a knockout. That doesn't tell me anything. Uh, judges sometimes uh, steal the victory. So I've been taught to finish fight before the end. Uh, like, don't give uh, opportunity for judges to steal your victory. It's oh, wow. what I've been told by my coaches many, many years ago. Like a Lithuanian fighter, you cannot make a huge career in your home country because it's small but uh, when you're fighting abroad every time uh, the crowd and the judges cheers for local fighter so for me it was wasn't many options to do three round fight you understand what i'm yeah, talking yeah, yeah i mean that's definitely that's definitely good advice with all the corruption everywhere uh, and, oh, and another thing I want to ask you, I always ask people this question, who's the most famous athlete in Lithuania right now that we would know? Any like NBA players? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, we had some uh, several NBA players. Um, the, the most famous person in sports from Lithuania, it's Arvidas Sabonis. He, oh, yeah. <clears throat> he was in Portland Trail Brazers in NBA. Right now, I think it's his son, but I'm yeah, not yeah. really... I think he plays for the Pacers. He went to Gonzaga. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I, I'm not really into basketball, so. Yeah. Now, do you watch a lot of MMA right now? Yes, I watch. It's interesting for me. Yeah, that's cool. 
Who's your um, favorite fighter? Um, I liked Khabib. I'm I like get uh, get yeah. Gatier. Gage, Gage. Oh, Justin Gage, yeah. Good yes, uh, I like uh, Dustin Poirier. I like f l watching McGregor fights. Many interesting fighters. Yes, that's cool, Jedi. Do you have anything else for him before he uh, before he goes to bed? No, thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah, that was nice uh, meeting you. That was really no cool. Problem. Thanks. Keep in touch. Last, thanks. Last chance to shit talk, Connor. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, thank you. I, I, I had this opportunity many, many times. Uh, every mm. person who I meet tells me the same. Like, oh, <laughs> call him out. <laughs> I'm not That's well, funny. you're a good man. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. What's up, Nick? Hi, Nick. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? What are you? Are you in the car? I am in the car. I'm driving around uh, the misses and the little guy. Oh, uh, nice. I got to pick, I gotta keep a phone on. So when I get the pickup text, I don't get an angry text 10 minutes later. Like, hey, yeah. idiot, where are you? <laughs> so let's get right into this. Um, so we're going to say this is uh, Nick's job. Do you want to go, Joe? Nick, you are a reality show person. <laughs> Joe, Joe that, it looks like it. <laughs> Yes, yeah. you're on the I'm real world. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> but I am not. No, I am not. But thank All you. Right. Maybe you know, now. Obviously, this is not a normal job, Jedi. So we're we're looking for something a uh, little little strange here, maybe. Mm. Are you an oddity collector? Uh, no, no. I mean, of sorts. But no. Yeah. <laughs> Do you deliver parts to medical facilities? Uh, no. All right. So you don't have fetuses in the car. So, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. Uh, not maybe, today. <laughs> not today. He said. <laughs> like, like the last two people. May, maybe try to narrow down like uh, what this profession involves, then you can kind of go from there. Do you use tools? Uh, no, I would say no. I would say no. Is your hair part of the job? <laughs> uh, I make it part of the job. It's not really part yeah. of the job. But I would say no for for what you're yeah. guessing. Yeah, no, like it's not it's not used in, in yeah. the job. Yeah. Are you a sign language interpreter? No, I, I did used to speak sign language. I, I had a deaf cousin, but I know I'm not. Are you a doctor? Oh, God, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I play one on television. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Jedi? Are you, do you go to people's jeweler? houses? Oh. Do I go to people's uh, houses? No. Okay. Are you a jeweler? So uh, no. What, I, no. what I what I will say is Nick is one of the top in the world at what he does. Oh. <laughs> but specifically what number six? Yes, number six. Right now it should be probably number three or four. But let's we'll, we'll, it's number six yeah. officially. Are you the yeah. lead singer of a an alt rock band? Oh god, no. Yeah, Joe, I'm, I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna cover for Nickelback in their next few concerts. Joe, <laughs> Joe, I just said he's number six in the world at something. You don't rank rock bands. He's literally. <laughs> if you Google him, you can be like, "What number is Nick?" And it will say his world ranking. Do you play a professional sport? Um, I'm gonna say yes to that. Yeah. I guess. Are you the world's best yo-yo guy? <laughs> I mean, I'm not the world's be best anything, I would suppose, other than, you know. Are know, you the like sixth that? best yo-yo player in the world? I, I am not. I, I, I've never, I'm a terrible yo-yoer. <laughs> Nick, you Jet look like you'd be good at yo-yo. Oh, I wish. Yeah. Jedi, Are what you, you what a you dance champion? Oh, God. My, my kids <laughs> might tell you yes, but my fiance would tell you, hell no. <laughs> Do you have the sixth highest rated show on YouTube? 
Oh man, dude, I, I really wish for that. I wouldn't be driving a Nissan Altima if that yeah. was the case. But, <laughs> <laughs> like but my they, Altima, nothing against Nissans. Fair but enough. They, but they are on YouTube, and I've watched a bunch of them, and it's the most entertaining thing I've ever seen. <laughs> We're gonna watch. YouTube, yes. Yeah, we're gonna watch yeah. a couple of those clips too. Joe, Damn. I will tell you one thing. We were yeah. talking about this profession recently. We're like, how insane it is. It's a gift and a curse. Yeah. Are you a prepper? No, 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 no. Do you have anything set aside, like some water mm -hmm. bottles at least, in case, God forbid? I have in water bottles in what I do. Yeah, yeah. there's water bottles in what I do. Yeah. yeah. So to the side, if you will. Yeah. And maybe at some point you might use some type of mix. Yeah, yeah, totally. Which I thought it was always water. Then I heard you talking about mix. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Going to oh, give you guys yeah. like one more guess each, and then we might um, give it away for you. Do you, mm. do you, do you make beer? Oh no, my my brother does. Um, but Your brother I, sounds uh, cool, Nick. <laughs> yeah, <he does. laughs> bet you he doesn't drive an Ultima. Yeah, no, Jedi. no, he drives a, a Subaru. <laughs> Jedi, Jedi, one more guess, and then I'm going to go to the clip of something. Okay, were you on Inked, the tattoo show? Uh, no, I do have a few tattoos though, and I want to get more. Okay, so I so. so uh, <laughs> According to the official world rankings, Nick isn't even the top in the – there's someone higher ranked in his household. So Nick is number six. This person is number five. Joe, pull up Mickey one clip. This is his fiance. You're a competitive eater. That's hilarious. Joe, this is his girlfriend. She, she had like 44 hot dogs or something. <laughs> You guys must be a, a, a riot to have dinner with. Oh, <laughs> you guys are like a power couple. I mean, it's unreal. Like, I mean, Joe, how envious are you of this relationship? They go Did you guys do meet doing it or did you decide to get into it together? Joe, you can shut the clip down if you want. It's just um, it's, met, it's, it's, um, it's, we legitimately met the morning of the Nathan's hot dog eating contest at the gym. So it, uh, yeah, she was, it, it was yeah it was interesting because we both work out the day of a contest um she does predominantly cardio and i move some heavy shit around and um and i had a photographer following me because people like to watch and like i kind of i look slightly different than a lot of the other eaters um so they uh they had a photographer following me around and watching me train she came up to me and introduced herself and at that point she was a five-time nathan's champion yeah. And she's like, hi, are you competing today? I'm like, yeah. She's like, do you mind if I take a picture with you? I'm like, uh, sure. Because I was just a scrub. <laughs> it was just the first time. And um, we kind of just hit it off. We have similar, like, neuroses about ridiculous things. And, yeah. Um, and it's fun. You get to travel the world and compete with your best friend in, you know, wing eating contests or chili or poutine or whatever, you know? Uh, now, Joe, when he says he looks slightly different from all the other ones, he means he's completely ripped. What are you, are you a bodybuilder? Does that, <laughs> does that, does, no, but does that help? Does that help? Um, being in shape, I feel when I get heavier, um, we call it a fat belt. It's harder for the actual organ of the stomach to expand because there's pressure on it. Um, so when I get and when I get heavier, I'll feel like nauseous quicker. So yeah. I try to stay mm. in shape. Plus. You know, as I stay leaner, I typically crave more foods and I'm hungrier. So that makes it easy if you got to put away, you know, 226 chicken wings in 10 minutes or something. Oh, How did you figure out that you had this talent? <laughs> had it since birth. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it was uh, one of those after I used to be a competitive bodybuilder. And so after the after that kind of became a little bit. um more damaging than good for me um and i already had a couple kids i'm like i probably want to be around you know in 20 years mm. i need a new competitive outlet and i had a friend say like hey there's a punch eating contest coming up which like polish jelly donuts mm. um you They're should good. do it and i'm like yeah no i'm like i'm not doing that and he's like well you can win 200 bucks and you get free donuts and they're raising money for charity <laughs> i'm in sold <laughs> so i win 
and I, I won pretty handily against people who had done it before. Um, I did my next contest, which was um, the White Hut Cheeseburg Eating Championships, which was 15 professionals. And I was just a bodybuilder waddling himself onto the stage, like not knowing where to go. And I placed fifth amongst yeah. 15 professionals. <laughs> I'm like, and they told me, like, like maybe you should try this. <laughs> like, you yeah. might kind of be good at this. So, yeah, it's, uh, so, uh, it's worked yeah. out. So I'm looking at your world records. Now, 223 wings in 10 minutes. How does that... But how do you even have time? Like, uh, what what considers like a wing eaten? It's like every two point um, five seconds. It, they do it by weight, yeah, weight displacement. So um, they give us like a twenty pound tray of wings and a giant bowl, and then at the end of the t- uh, ten minutes, they weigh the displacement, and each wing counts for X amount of ounces, depending on if it's sauced or not I got sauced. You. Or I got you. So yeah. listen to some of these records. You get the wings. You get five point two pounds of rib meat in twelve minutes. Thirty five bratwursts in ten minutes. 35 ears of corn in 12 minutes, 28 burgers in 10 minutes. Oh my four, gosh. 46 moon pies in eight minutes. Uh, <laughs> it just goes on and on. A five pound burger in eight minutes. Bro, are six- you chewing this stuff or are you just sliding down the gum? Um, like, how's this? How's this as work? little as possible. Chewing is a waste of time. So you try yeah, to do it as like little that. as possible <laughs> with getting it down. <laughs> and and um, I would say the toughest one may have been. I did 12 cans of spam in eight minutes. <laughs> that was, and it wasn't cooked. It was just, it was just blocked. So that's nine pounds oh of spam God. in eight minutes, which is about 56 grams of sodium. Um, so that was one where after the contest for a while, yeah. you're sitting there and in the background, you can kind of hear like, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> like, what is my life right now? Like, what is, I could be like an accountant or yeah. something, right. but no. So one of the most impressive things was um, his fiance Mickey had uh, 16 and a half pints of ice cream in eight minutes. A pint wow. of ice cream. <laughs> she is unbelievable. Yeah. Like I won't even, I won't go toe to toe with her in an ice cream contest. We'll, we'll argue about like cleaning the house, but I'm not going toe to toe with her in an ice cream contest. <laughs> Any other food, if it's pure capacity foods like space, um, she yeah. can fit more food than I can. If it's a food like spam or pork roll or pepperoni rolls, or it's a little bit more um, yeah. ferocity, so to speak, yeah. that's usually a better contest for me. And now, Joe, can you pull up the picture of the soda? This one doesn't even make sense to me how you can fit that. They drink- <laughs> <laughs> so you have what, 24 sodas there? She has, I don't know, 20. What, what was that, about an hour long to drink all that? That was, um, it felt like about six days, um, <laughs> oh. but it was, it was roughly a it was roughly about an hour um, because we were just kind of conversating and stuff too. Yeah. Um, But somebody like just emailed us because we have contacts on the website and they're like, Hey, do you think you guys could chug 24 sodas? I'm like, dude, I can't chug 24 sodas. I'm like, I'll do my best for you. You know, I'll see what I could do because because people have fun ideas. And then some people are like, do you think you could eat glass? Like, no, I'm not (laughs) in the circus. I can't do that. Like, but, um, but that was a fun one. So we tried it and got the 24 sodas down. The kicker was, I knew I wanted to get to like 16 of them. Yeah. So I got to 16 and then I'm like, okay, that's like X amount of ounces. Well, I want to get to this amount of ounces. And then I'm like, okay, I could get to 20. And then I got to 20 and she's like, if you got to 24, it'd be two cases. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, and my obsessive compulsive disorder kicked in and I had to get to 24 or, or burst. <laughs> so no. how do yeah. you, um, feel afterwards what do you i mean how do you guys work it off are you guys x laxing it afterwards i mean how do you get it out of your so system the, the soda is just a lot of a lot of pee and it was um most of them were diet sodas and caffeine free so i did my heart didn't explode but um the if it's something like you know 16 and three quarter pounds of poutine in toronto mm-hmm. or um you know 44 hot dogs or something like that then usually the days leading up i'm in a big calorie deficit um, for about 24 hours prior, I'll cut out most solids, um, probably take some mag citrate to make sure everybody left. And then the days after I'm in a calorie deficit too. And it's very much like a financial budget and it's not something I would condone, mm. but if I told you, you had to take a vacation every three weeks, you could fit it into your budget. If you just didn't really spend much on food or like other utilities on a day-to-day basis, is that going to be a great rewarding life for you? No, but you're not going to go in the red as long as you're budgeting for it. And that's kind of what yeah. it is with calories. I see. So what would you say the biggest like misconception is about competitive eating? Oh, um, amongst the zillions, 
that there are is like all of us are 600 pounds and we do this every single day. Yeah. Um, but realistically, there's people who get angry and they call it gluttonous and wasteful and what have you, which um, I understand, you know, looking from the outside in. But that said, just this last weekend in Miami, we did Wings for Wishes, uh, which was a wing eating contest combined with an event. And we raised $408,000 from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's, that's enough for, yeah, 81 wishes for sick kids. Or we raised like 250 k for um, Friends of We Care in Toronto, which is, um, you know, summer camps for exceptional children. Or, you know, every year Nathan's donates, I want to say, um, 100,000 um hot dogs to feeding America and food banks around New York. So they all have some form of charitable aspect. We're just using our bizarre talents to do that. And I understand why our seem ridiculous, but like, this is my talent. LeBron James yeah. can dunk a basketball. Some right. people run a four, three forty. I can yeah. shove stuff down my face really quick. <laughs> do you guys have regular jobs or is this what you guys do? So I have a regular job. Um, I actually manage an adult novelty store Monday through Friday. And, uh, yeah, so my kids, when they get older, are going to be like, dad, what, what is your, people are going to be like, what does your dad do? He's a businessman. He's a businessman. Yeah. It's fine. But, um, but no, I do that. And then we travel and do all this stuff aside. She being the number one ranked female in the world with MLE and seven Nathan's titles. Um, this is her gig, you know, wow. she's, and she's much more marketable watching like, an attractive woman do all this than watching some douchebag with a colored mohawk do this. Um, and she's a lot more people want to pay to see. And they're much more surprised when she goes like, like the big Texan is a famous food challenge that steak. Yeah. So it's a 72 ounce steak, dinner roll, shrimp cocktail salad. She did two at one time, just casual. Oh, and she does it like with, wow. with manners and just chilling there. Yeah. And everyone's like, where does it go? Where does she hide it? I'm like, she doesn't, she's yeah. a freak of nature. Yeah, she does. Wow. Right. Joe, I wanted to pull up a clip, but I, I can see. Do you have a question? I do. Yeah. I do. Well, no, it's more of an observation, maybe a question. Uh, Nick, you're going to be my new favorite competitive eater. I love the the mohawk. Thanks, man. That whole look, <laughs> dude. You. That's that's awesome. I knew you were like, could tell you were like cool at some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just tell. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. But I think I'm going to be a fan. Uh, I'll tell you, I told Todd this story. I was in a hot dog eating contest a few years ago. And uh, like on the spot, they were like, who wants to do it? And I didn't want to do it. And they were like, yeah. you're going to do it. And I did it. And <laughs> the trophy, you know why? The trophy was five feet tall. Oh, and I wanted to win. Awesome. And I could I yeah. could polish off hot dogs. And, and so I'm, I'm going. I got off to a nice lead. I'm popping them down. And then I hit a brick wall at seven and a half. <laughs> and some dude came sliding up at the last minute. He finished his eighth. He won. You know what I got for second place, Nick? A stomach ache. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's an indigestion. Yeah. yeah. And I had to go yeah, have that's... dinner with my wife's family for the first time. That was the first time I met him. So it looks yeah, like I mean, I'm... they could yeah. be proud. <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> they were embarrassed. They so, were embarrassed for me. Nick, it looks like you might be getting your 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 kids now. But um, do you want? Can you give us like three more minutes? Of course. Uh, I, it looks like is someone opening your trunk? Is that what's going on? Oh, uh, uh, oh God, who's that? No, that's my fiance. <laughs> she's just uh, she's got yeah, she's got the baby. Yeah. So Joe, you just have to play it for like a minute, but pull up the ice cream clip just so we can see the size of these ice creams. Do you have that one? Uh, I don't see it. No. What about the um, the thumbnail? Got the one? thumbnail. Yep. Yeah. So their their oh, their yeah. your YouTube <laughs> your YouTube channel is um what is it, the hungry couple? Uh, it's, uh, it's under youtube.com slash uh, Miki Sudo. So M I K I S U D O. Oh. Yeah. So like, look at some of these things, Joe. Um, the Twix world record. What was the other one? You had a hundred Snickers, like uh, the Snickers Easter eggs. Egg. Yeah, like the Easter Snickers yeah. eggs. Yeah, that felt like a bunch chocolate of chocolate eggs. Oh, How many yeah. you gotta eat? What's your record? Uh, I did a hundred, which is like I think like nine and a half pounds of Snickers eggs. Yeah, it was Ooh. twenty-one thousand calories. I would oh, try my that. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I'd it was. Um, sweets are tough. If you don't go quickly around the 15 to 20 minute mark with sweets, your body turns on you. 
it goes to the bad place and you start like hearing voices, namely probably your parents going, we're so disappointed. <laughs> Have you ever thrown up while competing? No, no, that's an automatic disqualification. And I, would I like money and winning. Um, so you do your best to, to know where you're, you got to put the brakes on. Ultimately, you know, as ridiculous as it sounds, when we say like we're professionals, you kind of know, you start to know the difference between like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. Oh, this is, you know, this doesn't taste good anymore. And like my stomach is at capacity. And if I try to push it, your body's going to fight you and it wins every time. So you got to kind of know. What do your doctors say? <laughs> do they tell you to stop doing this? So my general, uh, yeah, he, my primary care, he was very interested, to be honest. He didn't believe me at first um, and wanted to do a ton of blood work. And did my and I get blood work done a few times a year, and it's always been consistently pretty good. Like that, since I've started this, um, I've lost weight and a lot of like my bodybuilding weight, and my blood work and my markers are actually better now than when they were um, when I was competing. So and it's largely because let's say we do this, let's just say 15 days a year, 20 days a year. Yeah. If 345 days a year, you're making deposits, so to speak, into your health. You can mess up a little bit 20 days a year. And again, we don't condone the behavior, but like, yeah, it's um, so far so good. Uh, so, Joe, two things. Joe, I just sent you an email, the ice cream one. And um, so how many belts do you guys have at Nathan? She has, does she have seven? <sighs> Ouch, man. Ouch. That's a kidney <laughs> shot is what that is. Seven. Uh, she well, has... let's, let's just say seven combined. Yes. we Technically, we have seven combined and we have like a dozen belts combined. Whether they belong to me or not, like we're engaged. So what's hers is mine and what's mine is hers. Uh, well, technically I, I, speaking, yeah. she has got a boatload of belts and looks basically like Floyd Mayweather. Or like you remember when Roy Jones Jr. was really good and had like yeah. too many belts to carry? That's yeah. my fiance, effectively. And I'm the sh like we're in contest. We're like, can can we take a picture? And she'll be like, sure. And then they hand me the camera. It's kind of like being engaged. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, but it's it, it's fun. You know, it's fun. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be hard going up against Joey Chestnut. It's like running into a buzzsaw. Um, to an extent, yeah. I mean, he's the he's the best. He's the LeBron James of what we do. Um, you know, Jeff Esper is another one who wins a ton of contests, ranked number two in the world. With that said, I one point or another, I've beaten every single person in a contest. Yeah, right. You know, I'm if we're eating hot dogs, and Joey's obviously the favorite, but it's like the first time you do it, of course, you're like, oh man, that's Joey Chestnut. And then after that. You get to know him and he's like that's chestnut he's an asshole i don't care yeah. i'm gonna try to beat him anyway he's just a guy yeah. you know it's um he's very very good but with that said i do anything to win if i didn't think i had a chance to win i wouldn't do it what's the all these people who compete to be like oh i'm, I'm there to be better than myself well i right. practice to be better than myself i compete to yeah. win yeah. so um well you're recognizing the, the talent in the jeff espers or the the mickey sudos or the joey chestnuts it's like well I'm climbing the hill. You guys have been up there for a while, and I'm going to kick you mm. off when I get to the top. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Esper lives like 20 minutes from me. He lives in Oxford, Mass. Oxford, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. um, So, Joe, before we let we let them go, do you have – oh, yeah. Well, I'll put the ice cream clip just to look at how much ice cream this is. This I is had Burlington. schoolhouse ice cream <laughs> in Burlington. Burlington. Massachusetts, and we've got our 10 scoops Sundays in front of us. 10 scoops of ice cream, 10 toppings. There's, there's like 10 bananas in this. <laughs> wow. Just casually melting. So we are going to get to oh, this. Oh, God. Let's get going. Oh, oh. Going the other way. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. All right. Thank you. I mean, uh, oh Joe, my gosh. Joe, how envious are you of that relationship? I would love to <laughs> hang out with both of you guys. Yeah. yeah. Just, we'd have so uh, much any, fun together. Anytime, man. We we're so, pretty. We're, we like to tell people we're pretty boring, but you know, yeah. it's, we do some fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so, Joe, Nick has spent a lot of his life in Connecticut. You're from Connecticut, right? Originally yeah. Hartford, but I've lived in New Hartford, uh, Granby, Torrington. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you get back here? Um, not too too much. You know, like once you leave, I think you you stay out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's one of those things where I, you know, we dig Florida. It's 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 yeah. great, but um, we. They're hopefully the you know like white hot cheeseburg eating contest comes back at the Big E again, so yeah. we'll be going through you know right oh, up there, yeah. and then um, 
you go back up there because I, I have some family up there and stuff too. So, uh, so we go back up periodically. Uh, and then my other kids fly down, you know, they're still in Connecticut with their mom, but I fly the other kids down all the time. So I go up there to pick them up and, you know, I get a bunch of friends there. So there are parts of me that love, you know, parts yeah. of Connecticut, but like, yeah, especially this time of year for the past like six months, I, I mm. love it down here. Yeah. All right. So we, we have, we have a uh, Mark, coming up next so yeah thanks uh thanks guys and uh thank you nick keep, it, thanks, keep in touch good luck oh, uh, nick one quick thing uh yeah, thank you two, two weeks yeah. ago joel hansen was at the bar next to my house they have this yeah. mac they have this mac attack thing where you couldn't even imagine eating the whole thing and he ate two. <laughs> oh, is that the burger yeah it was like bur- what was it joe burger mac and cheese fry it was just like an insane yeah. amount of food yeah, yeah. I think we might have done that. Meek and I might have done that one. We went and oh, did really? that one just for like we were actually we were driving home from Pax East when they held it in Boston because we were featured in a video game. Yeah. And we heard about the challenge and it was kind of like, hey, you want to go get a free lunch? Like, yeah, why not? So we recorded. Yeah, we recorded that. That's a fun one. Free Tastes lunch. pretty good too. <laughs> yeah. <I'll take> that. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Nick. You for having man, me, guys. Dude. Appreciate yes. it. Yes. See you later. Um, all right, Joe, you want to pull up uh, Mark and Krista, see if it works this time? Mark and Krista, you there? Hello. Oh, hey. hey. All right, this is uh... – That's a hard act to follow right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> how are, we? So, how are yes. we on level? How are we on our volume level? Oh, perfect. Good, good. Perfect. So good. they're audio only, so we're going to jump right into this. So we're going to say um, – I talked to Mark about this earlier. Oh, real quick. Are you guys Bama or Auburn fans? We're Bama. Roll Tide. Roll, roll tide. tide. Roll. Yeah, baby. I, Love it. I was going to say the one thing we have in common yeah. is I, I live in a place where our football team dominates. Well, not so much anymore. The Patriots. Uh, that must be kind of fun. It, it's a it's a different type of life, Joe, living in a place where it's not NFL teams. It's college sports. Yeah, well, I love Alabama. That's like my favorite college football team. I was just with a buddy of mine, uh, Britt, who is an attorney in Alabama, and uh, just invited me to come down to his ranch uh, and and go catch a game next season. So I'm excited for that. And I'm excited to talk to a couple Bama fans. Yeah, boy. <laughs> so what we'll say here is, um, Jedi, you're going to go first. And I talked to Mark. We're going to call this a lifestyle. Lifestyle. Let's see. So try to narrow it down like we did the other ones and then maybe guess. Well, when I hear lifestyle, this is my question. Are you guys swingers? I know. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Are you guys preparing for the end of the world? Not exactly. <laughs> okay. Not exactly. Hmm. Not exactly. Okay, I'll go with are that. You, are you so guys Joe, yeah. alien hunters? I'm sorry, what? Are you guys alien hunters? No. No. Now, Joe, just keep in mind, th- your answer to your question, they kind of had to pause a little bit, so. Yeah. Um... Alien hunters, I'm kind of liking the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> that actually would be pretty cool in, in a way. Where would you start, you know, with a uh-huh. lead like that? All right. Let me think about this for a minute. Are you... Hmm. It's got nothing to do with aliens. I think we just established that. Is that about right? <laughs> That's it's correct. a lifestyle. Do you guys do coupons? Are you like the coupon champions of the world? <laughs> coupons, yes. Champions, no. It's not why they're here, Joe. No, okay. No, I mean, I take mine to the, to the store like this. <laughs> so you're a good shopper then. All right. I'm a good shopper, yes. What is it you buy at the grocery store? Groceries. Oh, no, Joe. This is, this is, this is yes or no questions. But, yes and no, uh, me. But actually, um, guys, could that be a question where, like, it would help them if, if you were allowed to answer that question or no? I would say yes. Yeah, Do you buy so a lot of food? Yes. So you're either the world's fattest couple. <laughs> oh, God. No. no. All right. That was, I wasn't asking, technically. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um. I was going to say hoarders, but that's not the word I'm looking for. 
Nope. You guys stockpile food? Do you make your own food? Yes. Hmm. Are you guys? Well, um... it's still it's still on Joe. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm still. Yeah. Are you guys preppers? Ding, 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 ding. Yes. No way. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So from what I've, they have their own website, which is uh, practicalprepping.info, and they have their own podcast. Oh, Practical very cool. Prepping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they... And it, it's really growing. And it's a daily podcast, and it focuses on practical prepping. And it's kind of an outgrowth of a book we wrote called Practical Prepping for Everyday People. And Joe asked if we were prepping for the end of the world. We're not. If, if we have something that is a societal changing event, like a total nuclear war, you know, we don't want to survive that. We're grandparents. Our kids are grown. We've had a great life. Well, I just like to have time to get out in the backyard and sit in the swing and watch the fireworks because we know we're about five miles from a major target. But we, pre we prep for the practical things. The, the, the ordinary daily emergencies and even bigger things like, you know, cataclysmic storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, you know, that sort of thing rips through a community and tears it down to the ground. And so you've got to be able to act and respond and recover from that sort of thing. And having a sense of preparedness for not only your mindset, but also the practical gear and things you need. And we consider food and water the most important things you can prep for because you can have all the gear in the world and all the ammo in the world and all the backpacks in the world, but you can't eat or drink any of those things. And if you're going to survive like a lockdown or a power outage or a longer term thing, you got to eat and drink. So those are our top two. I was out of toilet paper two weeks into the shutdown. Yikes. Uh, have we used all of ours up yet? No, we still have some. <laughs> That's what like about prepping. Prepping, cre prepping allows you to not panic by. And so we, we, we cruised right through 2020. We never had to panic by anything because mm. we have stored food and we rotate that food out, you know, into our daily life and then replace it as needed. What kind of foods are best that you buy? Generally, anything canned or in a dry form like dry rice or dry beans have the longest shelf life, even longer than the expiration codes that are actually printed on the can. Uh, most cans are three years. Most good advanced preppers can open them 10 to 15 years later and they're fine. Uh, so canned goods and dry stored goods are tops as far as shelf life. You're also going to buy what you eat. There's no sense in purchasing a whole bunch of stuff you don't eat anyway. So just buy your regular things. We, we get people started with prepping by saying, listen, you're going to the grocery store. Just pick up an extra couple of cans of stuff you like. Put that aside. Do that every trip. And before you know it, you know, you've got six months of food stored. And that helps people because sometimes you lose your job or you relocate or somebody gets sick. And funds and finances can be harmed by that. And so if you've got a stockpile of food, at least you can eat, you know, and that's an important thing. It's something we all want to do every day. So I know Jedi is going to have a lot of questions because she's kind of an, am <laughs> she's an amateur, she's an amateur prepper. But one of the, yes. one of the things okay, I wanted good. to talk about, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about the shelf life is I was cleaning out my pantry the other day and I found behind like something a box of cheez it's and i'm like oh god how long have these been here for and the expiration date was march 2021 about a year ago and i opened them up and they were completely fine oh yeah, oh, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's yeah, so the funny that you guys are on here because i was just cleaning my garage making room to store food <laughs> earlier today that's very, very smart. You know, the term prepper is a more modern term for the way a lot of people have lived their lives for literally hundreds of years. You know, we had grandparents and great grandparents and pioneers and everybody back in the past. They didn't call themselves preppers. They just stored food and they learned how to mechanic their farm tools and they learned to do their own doctoring. And that's a form of preparedness. You know, everybody's a prepper to some degree. Is it okay to save and store food in the garage? 
if you don't have a storage area? Yes. Will it be absolutely. safe there? Oh, okay. Well, you want to be careful with how hot it gets in that garage. Okay. You, you don't want to be storing canned foods when it's getting up 90 and 100 degrees out there. I mean, if you can comfortably walk around in your garage after having it being closed up and you're not stifling or gasping for air, and so long as you're not storing your food on the absolute concrete ground level, yes, you can. You might even want to put it into a, another bucket, like a five-gallon bucket, and put a lid on that just to kind of keep rodents and pests and spider webs out of your stock as well. Now, you're perfectly fine storing rice and beans and pasta out there. That's not a problem, but you really don't want your canned foods getting extremely hot. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. Thank you. Yeah. Now, sure. me and me and Jedi always talk about the coin shortage, and I did see on your website there's a baby formula shortage. Is that real? That is real. That is real. We have two daughters right now with newborn infants, and they've had to scramble a little bit to find, you know, uh, the uh, formula the, that they use over the counter formula. And so I did a little research for them and found that, of course, it's an emergency situation. You don't want to raise your child on the emergency yeah. recipe, but there are times when you might have a weekend or something that you are just out and you can't buy, beg, borrow, or steal it. So you got to make formula. And there are some very specific guidelines on that. I don't, I had, I'm, I'm a little bit fuzzy on the details on that because I'm not, I don't have to make formula. Um, but yes, we wanted to provide that because there are some people, you know, right here in America, we're not talking about third world problems mm -hmm. we're talking about down the street america and there are whole shelves of formula that's supposed to be there but the shelf is empty and part of it is a supply chain issue and yeah. we're probably going to see greater supply chain breakages it's not just ships that are not able to get into port we're going to see more food shortages coming in say six or eight months the cost of fertilizer has gone up tremendous. And so the farmers are either having to charge more or they're not able to uh, raise what they've been raising. And I know that there's a number of farmers that has switched over from corn to soybean simply because of the um, fertilizer situation. And then you take the price of uh, petroleum products. They burn a lot of diesel fuel. And the price of diesel fuel is ridiculous now. Yeah. So, yeah, we're suggesting people start start your little stockpile. You just never know when you might need to rely on it. It's like that here in California, too. The baby formula, the shelves are empty. And some of the places, they, they put the formula under lock and key. So right. that's interesting. Or they limit you to, like, they limit your, your you can purchase one, maybe two cans. Right. Uh, and, that, uh, and that's, I'm telling you, people that, I think that some of this started with the pandemic, with the whole supply chain problem. And we began to realize that, you know, everything is connected. And when there's one disruption in that connection, whether it's from the grocery store level or the, the freight level or the even the farmer level, any one of those dominoes gets kicked out of line, it's got a residual effect. And we're now beginning to reap some of what's been sown because of all of that disruption so that's too big of a problem to solve we've got to attack it another way so our way to attack that is to provide for us and our own and to put that message out there to let other people know listen when you have an opportunity to buy extra buy it yeah do it now one of the things i found interesting in your website is when people prep a lot of people want to make sure they have firearms and all this stuff but i did see it's more likely that you'll need cpr than a firearm mm -hmm. that's correct it's more likely that you will need cpr to save a family member's life than it will be a firearm that's true yeah skills are just as much a part of prepping as food water or gear and you think uh, you about guys you guys will be impressed to know that every person I've met over the last four years, I've in my head put together what I call my zombie apocalypse team. Okay. And I do. I, right. I analyze everybody I meet and I think like my wife doesn't know it. She's out. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he oh. isn't good with like doing that kind of stuff. I don't see oh, where she would be no. helpful. I love no. her. Don't get me wrong, no. but oh, she just sounds like it. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta repopulate the earth. <laughs> yeah. Crystal will be right there with me, and uh, yeah. you know she's got my back. No, no problem. <laughs> but I know what you and, mean about your group, your community. Yeah. You know, you're starting to pick and choose the ones that, you know, when, when the S hits the fan, uh, you got to know who your community is. And you, you never know. You might be spending the night in the woods with these people. So you just really want to pick them well. Krista, my neighbors were setting a tent up at a party when it started to rain in the backyard of somebody's house. And I, I was judging every single one of those people. And one of the wives stepped up and was like, you guys are flipping around. You got it backwards. Get to, and I was like, dude, Jill is on the team. She's the <laughs> leading my team. There's a leadership position for her. Yeah. So you were, you were auditioning your team and they didn't even know it. Well, on, didn't the, know it. <laughs> on the podcast introduction, uh, when Krista recorded it, she said, uh, where gear is good, but knowledge is better because the more you know, the less you have to carry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. Our- N- now, how do you guys keep up with a daily podcast? That's pretty impressive. Every day the podcast is released? Every well, day, five do, days a week. We've got a five-day-a-week release. That it, We upped it. We started two years ago with what, two or three. We started with one per week. Uh, actually, we started um, twice a month, every other mm-hmm. week, and then about two weeks in we went to every week and then about six months in we went to three times a week we were doing monday wednesday friday and then some nut had the idea uh, back in (laughs) january to go full you know five days a week and i told him i warned him it's it's interesting yeah i mean joe Joe's been in radio. Joe's a podcasting teacher. Joe, what do you have? Forty something podcasts, Joe. I have forty five podcasts I mean, on my network. Yeah, I mean that's wow. that's pretty impressive. Joe, that's pretty impressive that's, every day. Oh yeah. yeah, I don't even podcast every day. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I need so days I, off. Yeah, I do have a last question. Now, I did realize when we were doing the prepper episode, people prep for different reasons: uh, nuclear attack, uh, the economy. Do you guys have like something on the top of your list, or not really? Well, it, we're in North Alabama, and we are in Tornado Alley. Tornado Alley goes across Alabama, and Alabama actually has more tornadoes than Oklahoma has. Wow. The thing about Oklahoma yeah. is it's flat, and you can see them. And in Alabama, you don't see them like that, and most of our tornadoes are rain-wrapped. And we basically what we're prepared to do is to ride out an extended um, power outage, not being able to get to the store. Uh, I, we both, she went through Hurricane Hugo in just outside Charlotte, and it was still a hurricane when it got there. I went through the blizzard of 93 in Birmingham when, you know, you don't think of Birmingham having 20 inches of snow, but we did. And I was without power seven days there, and she was without power for 10 days in North Carolina. So that gave us a clue that we needed some power options. And so basically, we're prepared to be self-sufficient after some type of emergency, uh, whether it is a week or whether it's two weeks or a month or whatever. We're also Mm -hmm. prepared for any of the job loss type situations or, and, and we've actually, when we went to one income for a short period of time, we actually ate out of our preps for a while. And it really took the pressure off of not having to buy groceries there for about a month or so. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so we're, we're just about out of time, but Jedi or Joe, do you have any last questions for him? No, but remember when I said I was talking to my friend from Alabama the other day? He was talking about that big snowstorm uh, oh, yeah. because he was driving people all over the place. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> Small world. It's, it's, it's historic. Also, you guys, um, I would love to listen to your podcast because you're, you're both so pleasant. What do you, what do you guys do? Uh, what were you doing for a living before you started doing this? <laughs> well, we actually both are still working full time, which... Now that I actually say that out loud in words, it, I realize just how uh, 
wild and crazy it is to have a full-time podcast and two full-time jobs. Mark is in law enforcement, and oh, I am wow. in the window. I'm in the window treatment industry. But Krista is also a former professional singer, songwriter, recording artist, and she traveled in gospel music for about 15 years. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> right. that's amazing. To, yeah, I'm even trying to write a song, and I'm going to start it this way. Practice cooking on an open fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jedi. Do you have anything else? No, I don't. I, I'm, I'm interested in listening to you guys' podcast as well. Please so, do. Pr practicalprepping.info is the website. Now, is the podcast called Practical Prepping? Practical Prepping Podcast. And you can okay. uh, access it from the website or our Facebook page. Uh, definitely visit. I think you'll find something you'll enjoy. We we come up with interesting topics, things that are interesting to us and other people. And we've enjoyed being a part of your program. Uh, you guys are pleasant and fun, also, and that just sounds like our sort of community. Oh, thanks. So thank it looks you. like thank you. So you're coming up on what episode 400, right? Episode 200. 200. Will be Monday. Yeah, yeah I saw it. Was, I, is Monday. I thought it was 399. Yeah, it's 199. That's cool. Um, all right. Well, Jedi, thanks. Yeah. Jedi, if we can help. Just reach out, email us, whatever way. We'll be glad to help. Oh, yes, most definitely. I will contact you because I want to be prepared. <laughs> we will help you every step of the way. And we've got some articles on getting started and they're getting ready to add some more articles to the website. And we're just having fun, even though it's 14, 15 hour days. We're having yeah. fun. Yeah. And keeps me out of trouble and since she's a six foot redhead i have to stay out of trouble <laughs> <laughs> all right all right thanks guys thank you thank you, thank nice you very you much guys. thank nice you yeah well. all right all right so morks the end is here this is usually jedi's part but i'll do it <laughs> that'll do it for this edition of what's my line let us know what you think we'd like to do this again Hopefully Jedi is still talking to me after this. Yeah, that was such a surprise impromptu. Oh my yeah. goodness. See you next <laughs> see you next week. Bye guys.